roll till she was 18 months. Crawled at two years. Um, we put her in braces and put her on a walker at about two and a half, and then she walked independently by four and a half. Um, it's who has a question? We'll do it that way. What concerns do you guys have either for your physical therapist or what concerns do you have doing um, your therapy with your children at your house? I'll hold that until our Thanks moderator gets here. This is streaming, just so you all know. <laughs> um, Kyle just aged out of school, okay. and he's 20. Um, and my concern is, two years ago, he started moving forward, walking um, with his, his knee knocking. He stands just like that. I don't know how to correct that. <laughs> and when he stands, he holds his knees together to stand straight up and be leans forward. Just like that. Okay. That's how he holds himself up all the time. I don't know how to fix that. A couple of things that it could be. Um, if he sits a lot and leans forward, the muscles here in the front of his hips can get tight and can lean forward because they shorten. Other things could be, a lot of it is core control. Tabitha does the same thing. She stands in what we call sloppy, like this, and she uses her knees when they knock together to create that stability so she can be upright. We have done hippotherapy, core striding, so that she engages her core more, and that has helped pull her tummy in so that she can stand back onto her heels. If you have any kind of interventions in your area that um, horseback riding, anybody that does their ball therapy, the big, big, huge exercise balls, sit him on those and have him reach activities that will help him get his core. And if you guys really want to do something that's um, a little bit harder, because it will require compliance from you and compliance from him would be to get him some braces that will pull his feet up a little bit higher and push his knees apart. No, they, they, they didn't want to. It's not, it's not, it's not feasible to use the walker in the house. You actually have to use the walker, you can have to use the walker if you go to Walmart, but then you get, you have your, your shopping cart, so you can't use your shopping cart and, sh and shuttle Kyle around too. Right. So Kyle uses his shopping cart. Um, of course, you know, he leans over on the shopping cart, so you have to try to stand him up. Um, but the nice thing about him when he is shopping around, if he's checking out the women, because he's a women Yeah, he loves your women. Um, well, he's really fond of a very strong black woman. He loves his black women. He had to chase him down the other day on the beach, because uh, he was chasing him. Nice job, Troy. Um, <laughs> Poor guy. But anyway, he, um, he'll he stand up straight, and we call it fluffing his rooster feathers, because he will just stand up straight and just stand there and just, oh, yeah, check me out, girls. Yeah, I can stand up straight. I can do this. When he stands up, does he stand this way? Yes. Um, your biggest benefit would come from any kind of core strengthening, because as soon they stand like this because they can't, they don't have the muscles to control and bring it back over top of their feet. So they stand like this because that makes their back muscles work more and that's you get a lot of this. Right. That's why a lot of our kids do this. You can find any interventions in your area, swimming, horseback riding, therapy balls, any of that that will help engage this and bring him back here, then he'll stand up a lot straighter. And then you can, okay. from there, if that doesn't seem to work for you, then you guys can incorporate bracing or something like that. Okay, thank you. Sure. Who else has a question? Guys, hold the mic close to your mouth, too, so the people uh, in interweb land can hear everything. Okay. Okay, so we went to, um, just last week, actually started with a new OT. Anyhow, when I walked into her office, you know, Ben, we're doing a visit, and by the time the visit's over, she said, he needs PT. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I felt like we've done, <laughs> we've come so far from where he was because he just got his braces off. Last month in June, well, and independently, no yeah, okay. yeah, and I feel like he's doing fantastic. So I'm wondering, was that just, is this a real concern? Do I need to continue having him see a PT outside of his school, or I don't? I felt like he was doing great. So the I other know. aspect of PT that we work on is a lot of coordination and balance to keep our kids 
when they lose their balance to be able to step out of their base of support or out of their safe network and catch themselves and come back. So they may have been coming from that angle as, yes, he's walking, and yes, he's independent, and yes, he doesn't need a grace anymore, but we need to work on him more so that he can remain upright and be more successful at conquering different curves, ter ter terrain, being able to step up onto curves and that kind of thing. That was probably why, because he did fall numerous times during the visit. So that's probably why, because the person who did the braces was orthopedic surgeon, and she said, take them off in six months, come back, and let's see if he's stronger. So maybe it's... Was, were the braces corrective, or were the braces more supportive? Was there some kind of deformity? Okay. No deformity, just completely supportive. Okay. That was probably where they were coming from. They were probably wanting to maximize the function and the independence with him, you know, going from concrete to grass, to gravel, to do concrete stairs, that kind of thing. Okay. Nicole? <laughs> a question along the same lines, okay. and I mean this with no professional discourtesy whatsoever. Get it out, get it out. When, when is it time to discharge? When is it, I, because at this point we're four and a half, we've been walking for a year and a half, she gets good physical therapy at school. Okay. She does, of course, she does therapeutic writing, she does therapeutic dance class. When am I not a bad mom to give up the private PT for you know quality of life reasons? And Tell me what your goals are for her. I, I want her to walk safely. I want her How to. How far is she from that? She's reasonably good. She's not jumping yet. She's not running. How important is that to you? I don't know. Maybe I don't want her to run. Maybe I don't. <laughs> and I'm really okay with just fast walking because that's enough for me. Yeah, I, I mean she's a. She's Fast walking. I. Tell me there's a wall where she's like. Yeah. She, she's in an. It, here, here's where my hang up is. She's she's wearing an SMO. She's going to need an SMO because she has a terrible pronation. I mean, we're, we're going to have those forever, I think. And PT right now coordinates that for us. Okay. If we don't have that anymore, who in lieu of a physical therapist would typically coordinate something like that for if you? If she graduates from SMOs and you think that she will regress and need them again, you go to your pediatrician, pediatrician will refer you back to PT and they'll make the braces. Okay. The whole discharge situation, that depends on your communication with your PT and how important it is that she runs, jumps, dances, grapevines, kicks, and what your PT's goals are for her. Because my, we had the same situation with Tabitha when she did OT because they wanted her to be able to bead and they wanted her to be able to put blocks in the thing. And I was like, I don't care any of that stuff, I want her to be able to brush her teeth. Your goals don't match up, get her out. It's all what you want your kid to be able to do, and when you are ready, be done. PT, they can coordinate that. They can too. You just may have to ask them and, or, and put a little force behind it, but yeah. they can do that. They can do wheelchair valves, they can. wheelchair seating. That's all part of school therapy. If you've got a good therapist, absolutely. If you have a crappy therapist, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> call me and I'll write a letter of medical necessity for you. I've done, I'm serious, I've done that for famous kids. My, I call their PTs and they'd be like, hey, what about this? My question, I think, is along the lines of hers also, because my daughter walked at 17 months, which at the time seemed like a problem, and now that I know her diagnosis, seems like, yay, <laughs> right? So, um, but we did about six months of PT, probably when she was around three, to work on going up the stairs. And then, really, once we got to that point, the PT said, you know, you could probably be discharged, and, and we did. But now she's four and a half, and, and I'm kind of like, well, she doesn't alternate going up the stairs. I don't know how to ever teach her how to ride a bike. I mean, but I can't figure out, are those things you go back to PT for? Or do you just try to do them while you're by yourself at home? It depends on, you know, what your motivation is at home. If you really want to spend that time and have that time with your child to, you know, promote their development. Or if you would rather take them to PT, have them give you pointers, and then you do it at home. Or if you want to take them to PT and say, I want my kid to ride a bike. So when I go back to the developmental pediatrician in August, is it appropriate to say I want a referral back to PT absolutely. again so that my kid can learn to do things like, because she doesn't jump, for example, yes, to learn to jump and ride a bike and things like that. That's truly sure. really yes. not a crazy thing to yes. ask for. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, have you found that these kids are double jointed? I'm going to change that word to hypermobile. 
Um, and yes, almost all of our kids are low tone, which means that the rubber bands that control their joints are very, very stretched. Um, it, it's a problem for some and not a problem for others. I've seen really low tone, which is also another word for it, low tone kids that are PMS that walk earlier than other higher tone kids. It's just a matter of the genetics behind the tone in their body. So since they're hypotonic, hypotonic mm -hmm. do they have a less propensity to have broken bones? That has to do with bone density and more of the dietary and the genetic component about how they, who their parents were and what they were born. And what, um, I, I can say because we have a higher propensity to fall, we can break more bones, but I don't think just because we're low tone we're going to break more bones. Right. And plus these kids have, uh, they don't really have the parachute reflex. None. Right. <laughs> and then furthermore, uh, we did, we had pretty good success with pulpit neurosuit therapy. Yes. Um, and Want to chime in on that at all? Any other therapies we should be thinking about? <sighs> wow. It was, it was actually, it was the, you know, five hours a day for five weeks. Yes, ours is yeah. called intensive model therapy, and I used to do that. Um, I There are a couple of things that you have to think about before your child is appropriate for that. They have to have enough body control because when you put that, what they call the neurosuit or the therapy or whatever, you, whatever your therapist calls it, they create, you know, three times their body weight and pressure with the bungees that they put on them. So if your child already isn't sitting up or your child already doesn't have head control, you're going to squeeze their insides and they're just going to melt over and then it's going to be totally unsuccessful for everybody and mom's going to get upset and the therapist is going to be, hey, this is not working, we, this is a bad idea. I, I think there has to be a critical point before that kind of therapy is appropriate. I think they should be able to be standing for short periods of time, even supported. They have to be able to hold up their trunk against gravity before I can add extra weight to you and ask you to hold it up. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, for about four weeks with great success. It's fantastic. I used to work and I would put, bring the suit home in the evenings and put my daughter in it. <laughs> Sorry, she had to work all the time. Hi, my, my daughter is seven. Okay. And she's doing PT at school, three hours a week. Um, uh, the thing is that she's playing safe right now. She doesn't take risks. So she, she being your daughter or her therapist? No, my, my daughter. Okay. Yeah, so she's going like uh, up the stairs well, right. but she doesn't go down. Is there a reason that she doesn't want to go down? Because she's not looking down or she doesn't know what to go There's the thing called gravitationally insecure. Um, when you go downstairs, that very brief weightlessness that you have to be able to overcome before you can successfully step down. Tabitha's the same way, and Tabitha's issue is more of her eyes. She has depth perception issues, like she would Hulk stomp across every single one of these circles because she can't see that they're all the same height. She can see them as she comes up to them because they are closer to her face, but going down when they're away from her, she can't see the difference. And she can't, she can't coordinate that. You put them on the stairs and you hold one hand here and you get down and you put the other foot onto the next step. You give them that support and show that it's kind of like when you learned how to ride a bike when you were younger. Your dad took you out there and he rode with you to make sure that you didn't fall so you felt what it was like to do that successfully. You do it over and over again. Take that foot, move it down, move the hand down. Take the other foot, move it down, move the hand down. Over and over and over again. And then eventually you take your hand away and they do it on their own. It's taken Tabitha eight years to be able to go downstairs by herself. Mm -hmm. Get like a line, for instance, in the shoulders, no any stirs. Uh huh, exactly. She does that. Yep. So, okay. Totally doable. Uh, how can you help her with the risk, taking more risks? That has to come whenever she's ready. Um, we, this is going to make me sound like a horrible parent, we, we tried to make Tabitha fall so that she would create her reflexes. And so I got those foam squares that you can buy at Lowe's and Home Depot. We put them all over the floor in our house, and I went, I went and bought her one of those little character helmets from like Michael's craft store. And then I took beer koozies, cut them up, and super glued them all around the inside. So she had this helmet of beer koozies. So whenever she fell, that was how we would try to get her to create those reflexes. And that was, it was until she learned to fall that she started to feel safer taking risks because she knew that she could fall and not get hurt, and then she would get back up. It's it's, it also has to do with your comfort level because, you know, I never would have done that if my husband also wasn't in the same field and he didn't know what I was doing because your spouse could look at you like, what in the, are you doing? You're throwing the kid down on the floor to try to make them, you're going to break a bone, but it's, it will come with time. The other thing that you have to realize is that to take risks, they have to be able to get up off of the floor. So 
if they can't cruise over to a chair, if she can't get over to a chair and pull herself up, she's less likely to take a risk where she's going to be on the floor. A couple of facets, but mm -hmm. um, just to add to that, you might, if you haven't already, have her um, vision checked. Yes. You know, because um, I was amazed when, when my daughter needed glasses and how bad her um, vision was. I felt pretty guilty. Yeah, or not. No. Sure, Good morning. Thank that. you. Next, anybody? Who's next? Again. Um, so we did the tape, the kinesiology tape. Uh -huh. What is your experience with that? Because we stopped doing it, but do you like it? Do you use it? I do use it. I. What is it? Kinesio tape is. Do you know? Are you familiar with an ace wrap? Yeah. Okay. It's like an ace wrap, but it has adhesive on it, and it comes in strips. And I tape it onto their body, and it gives has a little bit of compression, a little bit of elastic give that kind of creates tension so that their muscles will work more. It's kind of like, um, I can't think of any things. Sorry? Theratogs are similar but slightly different. Kinesio tape goes directly onto the skin and it has an adhesive on it. You see it on athletes a lot. Um, it's what they use to kind of support their injuries and to re-educate their muscles. I think that it has a place with our kids, but I think that it is used incorrectly with our kids. Um, because I think a lot, not a lot of people are trained to use kinesio tape on the core, which is the big problem area for our kids, and they just try to tape extremities and they tape muscles to fire muscles instead of taping the main, the, the body of the car, so to speak. Well, and that's, I think our PT who was doing it at the time was really well trained in how to tape because he loved it. Like, as soon as he saw her, he would sit down and pull his pants up because he was ready to be taped or take his shirt off. He wanted it. Loved it. it also provides compression, and compression is very calming for our kids. It gives them that sense of control because, you know, if you are, if you think about being an astronaut out of gravity, you don't have any control of your limbs, you feel very insecure, and if you come down, gravity gives you that compression, it gives you that, okay, I can control my body. Kinesio tape does the same thing. I guess I was just wondering, like, long term, is that something else we should be looking at? If you, if you do kinesio tape, it's one of those things that once you do it, you have to keep doing it, unless you do the exercises along with the taping. It's kind of like if you break your ankle and you put a cast on it, the, I mean, the bone's going to, it's going to heal inside the cast, but you have to do the exercises after the cast is off to re, to re, to strengthen the muscles around it so the joint is just as strong. You have to use kinesio tape in conjunction with, you know, the other modalities to try to get that, to get that strengthening and that end result that you want. I like kinesio tape and I use it, we use it all the time with all the time. Tabitha has like permanent adhesive marks across her chest and her belly. <laughs> she has a big X, X marks the spot. But um, I like it. What what do you suggest as sort of the best core strengthening exercise when you have kids that don't imitate at all? Horses. Is that it? Absolutely. Okay. Horses, hippotherapy. There's a difference. There's, you know, you've got, hip, you've got hippotherapy and you've got therapeutic riding and they're slightly different. Hippotherapy is kind of used... Um, slang for therapeutic riding. Therapeutic riding is more what our kids would do because you get on the horse and they go around in circles. Hippotherapy is more I'm going to put you side saddle on a horse and make you reach and a lot of our kids can't follow that kind of a command. So a lot of people say it's hippotherapy but it's actually therapeutic riding. So that I say that so that you can look for both. Hi. Um, my daughter's been getting physical therapy since she was you know, little. She was diagnosed and now she's seven. And her gait's, she's like, it's fantastic the way she walks now. Um, she's no longer a toe walker, but she still has that low tone issue. Mm -hmm. And um, in particular, when she was, they said on her left side, um, they said with the way she was in the wound, she doesn't want to use her left arm, especially when she's swimming. It's like, it's like a weak side, like, you know. So is there anything that particular therapies besides physical therapy that would help strengthen, like make her move her arms swimming and give her the strength to swing a bat and all that, you know. That How you aggressive would... are you at home if you were to take her right arm away? Pardon me, the right to... Like if you were to take her right arm and tape it behind her back so she had to use her left arm only. How strong am I? Uh-huh. Would you be able to do that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, do I, can do. I can do it. I mean, she's half my size, so... That's... That is, I, I treat patients that have had um, strokes also, and they have that same kind of, they don't want to use that affected arm. Um, Tabitha was the same way. She came out with a broken clavicle, and she didn't want to use her left arm at all. So I did everything that I could. The TV was on the left. I made her reach with the left. Every time she got in the car, I would take her right arm and kind of stick it behind her so she had to put her weight into that arm to get into the car. 
very simple everyday tasks that you can do, like if she brushes her teeth or brushes her hair, left hand, everything left hand. Eating left hand. Yes, oh. everything left hand. How about the left leg? Same thing. If she goes upstairs, have her lead with the left. If she gets in the car, have her lead with the left. Okay. And if now the bathtub, lead like, with the left. How about like to make them stronger with the swimming? Is there anything? I mean, she wears a vest. <coughs> um, it might be a reflex issue with the swimming. If she does the freestyle and she turns her head this way and this arm calls, crawls in, there's a reflex that hasn't been integrated yet. Um, you can send me a video and I can let you know for sure. Um, one of the best things that you can do is to put her on all fours on the floor and strengthen that left arm and have her reach with her right arm. Okay. Or vice versa, you can have her weight on the right arm and reach with the left. Because okay. that also kind of mimics that swimming activity where one arm is kind of bent while the other one is straight. Okay, I'll send you a video. Thanks. Thank you. Best. Go for it. Thank you. Sure. I'm just going to buckle, that's and I'm not safe yeah. doing that. I don't feel comfortable doing that. But as far as like skills, coordination skills, running, jumping, and all that, yeah, go back to the team. No, Tamika doesn't either. It's, just, it's, it's like she's twerking. It's just, I'm just going to stick my butt straight out. Well, because our insurance will cover both at the same time. So we have to choose one or the other. Is there a way that... Mm, that's what we're nervous about. That, um, if you say that, when you go to a PT eval and you say, my, con my concern is that he's going to lose the core strength, but have them integrate something that he does, part of his therapy that he sits on a ball. You know, that will help. If you guys have anything at home like swimming, have him swim in, you know, swimming with y'all, or even if you have a therapy ball at home while he's watching his shows on TV, sit him on it. You know, roll it around just a teeny tiny bit so that he has to work on his core to keep everything strong, mimic that motion that he does on the horse. I don't think they don't regress, but I that's a that I see that a lot in parents is you know how do we get rid of one at, you know to do the other without losing something and there's not really a cut and dry answer because you will lose something like Tabitha's not doing hippo at all this summer and she she was independent going down the stairs and now she doesn't do it anymore because we lead with our stomach and that means I can't see the ground and that means <laughs> that means I'm just gonna fall right on my face so when we get back in hippo therapy all that will improve but that's. Talk to your therapist and make sure that they'll and continue to do core if you guys do decide to go back to PT for skill. Who else? Do you have any families that use, I think it's the electro that TENS unit? TENS is for pain, is for pain? but um, there's another the neuromuscular re-education kind of um, same thing with the electrodes. I don't use it on pediatric patients as a rule period, especially our kiddos, because you have to crank it up to, essentially it's, it has to feel like a muscle cramp for you when you get a Charlie horse in order to contract that muscle to make it work. And since I can't, I don't want to put Tabitha in a situation or any other kids that are nonverbal in a situation where I'm creating pain, I don't ever use it. Uh -huh. I won't do it. Yep. Yeah. And warm water therapy obviously is, is good for them just to kind of loosen them up to be using all that. Tabitha reacts different in the water than other kids. That relaxes her, but at the same time, I make her, we walk up and down the stairs in the pool so that she has to work her body against the water resistance. It's also really great for core, like the stairs over by the, the slide. Love those. Right. I'd love to get every kid on those and just walk them up and down and up and down and up and down mm -hmm. because it's really good. Acupuncture at all for these guys? Yeah. Again, that goes, even though they say that it's essentially painless, I steer away from it for children. I would. I really enjoy the alternative medicines like acupuncture, acupressure, craniosacrum, all that kind of stuff, but because my, my child and our kiddos can't tell us how it makes them feel, I won't do it. Because you know, craniosacral has the tendency to give you know, create a, you know, tremendous headaches because you're messing with the cerebrospinal fluid and how it flows. And 
all that kind of stuff, and I'm not going to, you know, put my kid in a situation. They did craniosacral on Tabitha for about three months, and she would come out of the sessions, even though the sessions are so relaxing, she would come out of the sessions hyper agitated because it messed her up so badly. Like her, her homeostasis was gone. Chiropractor, same thing. Anything that involves popping with our kids is actually dangerous because their joints are so lax in the first place. You're, it's kind of like, you know, you've already got a lax rubber band. If you go ahead and pop it, you're going to break it. I got a question about uh, what is a good exercise that teaches kids, our kids uh, the reflex of bearing their weight? Like, it's like it's kids come up on a corner and he's just like all over and, and, you know, just, just learning. To, to bear weight, like it's good, he falls and catches himself. Uh, like to not melt? Okay, so that's a learned reflex that he's learned. Um, if you guys go to him and you get down on his level and he melts onto you and you pick him up, he's going to do that no matter who does that to him. You know, I mean, Tabitha is lazy as well. I mean, as soon as I lean toward her and I try to get her face, it's just like timber, like leaning tower of pieces. She just comes toppling down on top of me. That um, the way that we got her out of that is we we gave her less um, less pressure. You know, we didn't we, when we come up to her to hug her, we don't wrap all the way around her. We kind of come up to her and we touch her trunk or we touch her on the shoulders and then we give her a kiss. And that way she realizes, oh, these people aren't here to hold me. These people are here to give me something, and I'm supposed to exchange something, and that that's, that has seemed to work well. She'll still melt whenever we grab her underneath her arms because that's you know that's how you pick a baby up, and they go limp when you pick them up, and our kids do the same thing. Oh, I just wanted to add about the cranio. Uh -huh. um, I've been doing my daughter for the past two months, and I'm, I'm huge into the alternative therapies. Um, in the beginning, I was told that it can make them regress and bring out certain behaviors or old behaviors but it helps balance the child in such a way, it centers them. My daughter was like the Tasmanian devil, running around the house all the time and just throwing things. Now she's calmer, her OCD is down, her seizure threshold, threshold is down. Um, I just, I'm really huge into these things. As long as it doesn't bring the child pain, is, I agree with you. And but, that goes back to the whole, you know, different things work for different kids. Yeah. You know, and a lot of that has to do with, you know, the personality traits that they're born with. Exactly. You know, as to what will work best for them. I, I actually encourage alternative therapies, but I just I will not do them just because I, I actually do them myself them. first. Like I'm doing Reiki now. Good. I'm gonna do Reiki on her, and then same thing. And then I guess then you can have a sense of what you feel your child will be experiencing. I agree. I think that you know if you do any of those alternative therapies, I agree that you need to do them first so that you can experience what your child might experience. Exactly. So. Um, my daughter's two and doesn't walk, and she has like hyperextension. I think you know, like her knees go really far back. Mm -hmm. um, so we got the taller AFOs, SMOs, like kind of up to the knees yeah, okay. to keep yeah, like her legs kind of bent forward, mm -hmm. and it's helped a lot. Um, is there anything else we can be doing besides that? I guess because it's really hard. Like I'm concerned, you know, like if she doesn't have those in, you know, like her legs are just going to go back, and it's really hard for her then to push all the way forward to take steps? Um, our kids, and y'all, it's eating a dead horse. I'm going to say it over and over again. Core strengthening is most important for our kids because they're so floppy. If you strengthen the core, it will help improve her posture and then she won't, because she stands like this, because she doesn't have the control to stand like this or to stand like this. And the braces are designed to, you know, your foot is supposed to be at a 90 degree angle to your leg, and it pushes, pushes it forward so that they have to stand with the bent knee. Um, but you don't really have to worry about braces if you have this. I don't know if she's doing any kind of ball therapy or if you guys have her in, you know, the book therapy and that kind of stuff. But that, that's usually the key. <laughs> and then, um, well, I don't like, um, Theratogs as well was, you know, another thing we were considering. I guess, can you, like, our PT showed us one with straps to work on specific areas. Have you used that and what are your mm -hmm. thoughts on those? And she doesn't really have so far too many sensory issues so it'd be more probably more supportive yes um their their tongues go along the same line as the neuro suit it just kind of depends on what input you give your child it's kind of like do you would rather ride a motorcycle or a bike with training wheels there it gives there's a different sensation that comes along with each of those and it kind of depends on how severe your child is like 
their talks are more designed for children with cerebral palsy or children that are that need some input, that need to figure out, okay, if I stand like this, this is the safest position for me. The neuro suit is more designed for children that have really severe tone issues once they begin to hold up their head. It works better for them to create those movement patterns. It, I hate to say it, but there's not there's not a right or wrong answer. There's not a fair talk over neuro suit over, you know, can easier take. They're all beneficial, it's just how you use them. Yes. Um, yeah, maybe you can explain those two terms because they're both very new to me. The two terms you just used answering your question. Which ones? The, the Theracom and then there was... Theratox? Yeah, and then the other name that you... Neurosuit? I'm having a hard time hearing what the words are, but... Oh, the Neurosuit? Okay. The Neurosuit it was actually designed for patients with cerebral palsy because it has a vest and it has a pair of shorts. It has It's all connected by elastic bungees. So I can take the bungee and I can pull it from a shoulder piece down to here to pull this way. I can take it and I can cross it here to give this way. I can pull this arm in by using the bungee that goes from here to here so that they get that input here so that they can feel a little bit more secure. Um, Neurosuit is really, really tough on our kids because they have to, number one, hold them, their selves up against gravity, and then they, you have to add that extra weight that the bungees give them, all that extra resistance. It can be very frustrating for kids. Theratogs are straps, um, a system of straps and that can wrap around the body in different ways to give that same kind of sensory input where they, oh, that's hard to describe. It's not as involved as a neuro suit, but it gives the same kind of input. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering whether you have any familiarity or re would recommend balance boards, something I've heard about as a way at home to improve balance and yeah, overall, and also mental, I guess, functioning. Tell me more about your kid and I can answer your question. How so old, what are they doing? Three and a half, so he okay. stands and kind of runs. Okay. His, his um, gross motor function is pretty good, but he is more apt to fall and lose his balance than, than the typical kid. So I was just curious if that's something that people are, are integrating into their process rather than actually go to, we don't have a physical therapist, but you know, trying to improve things at home. And then I also wonder whether, um, I don't know if you guys already mentioned this, but the balance bikes as a means of building um, core strength. It sounds like it might be sim uh, similar to hippotherapy, mm -hmm. and I'm a big cyclist, so I know that I get that general feeling myself, so. I, I, I agree with that. Um, as far as the balance boards, um, if you're willing to do it at home, be a rock star, go for it. Um, that's being proactive for your kid. I applaud you for doing that, especially because you guys aren't doing physical therapy. Um, the balance board itself, as long as you adjust the board to the height of the child, it can be beneficial because it's kind of like if I have a balance board that has a ball underneath of it to create the wobble that my dad who is six foot four used to see has to use a bigger ball to get more of a balance challenge. So for me to use his board is like trying to make me stand on the edge of a mountain with my feet fit this far, trying to make me stand up. Um, as long as you tailor it for your child, I think it's and always give them, give them, give him the security of having something around, like the couch nearby, the table nearby. That way, if he loses balance, you reach out and grab something. Who else? Annie. So we've had a hard time with Chase's orthotics with his braces fitting correctly. Mm -hmm. And every time we seem to get one on, or whenever he has the one, he'll turn his foot in. Inside the brace? Yeah. Or he'll walk like this now. And so like without without bracing, he walks, obviously. Right. Like that. But as soon as we put bracing on, he turns his whole foot in. And we can't have, haven't been able to figure out what to not get him to do that. Have you tried one brace on and one brace off? No. Could be a couple of things. It could be pain in the brace. That would be my most likely guess. Tabitha did the same thing when one was rubbing her raw, um, and we didn't see it for a while. She would walk on the toe of one while she had the other one on. I would try that first, put a venom, um, check them for redness when you take them off and see. 
um, one on one off is the other option. Um, the other one might does is that a dominant leg for him? Like Tabitha, whenever she goes to pull up on a chair, she always leads with that one, and yeah. so it always is more internally rotated because she brings it up this way to step. Yeah. If that's the leg that he leads with to go up the stairs, get in the car, that kind of thing, it's going to be natural that when you put extra weight on it, he has that sensation and he feels like he has to lead with it and turn it inwards. We tried the uh, twister straps, but. Oh, uh, yeah. Twister cables? Yeah. Yeah, those are a little medieval. And we've had, I mean, we've had difficulty with just versus fitting him in general. Like, we always have to get them adjusted. Um, I don't know what the perfect. Uh, my PC is, she's kind of frustrated too. She's like, I. What is the perfect brace for him? We don't know. The thing with braces that I love is that they're really good to fix simple issues. With our kids, we don't really have simple. We've got core, we have hips, we have knees, we've got Jenny Ricavada, we've got internal external rotation, we've got this, we've got this. So, you know, everything that happens at the foot affects everything all the way up the chain. And so you can brace him and try to control what happens at his ankle, and you may fix what happens at his ankle, but it may screw up everything else all the way up. So with, I find that with children that have better core strength, the braces are more appropriate and they work better. But kids with either a whole lot of sensory issues, like you were talking about chasing the grass earlier, those kind of kids, they, they use the brace as a, to seek sensory. I had a child one time who would put the brace on and then he would pop up and down inside the brace and he rubbed the spot raw on the back of his ankle because he just liked the sensation. He just wanted to do it. Nothing about walking, he just was like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm gonna do this because it feels good. But you can go back as many times as you're comfortable because that's your right. Because I, Tabitha would internally rotate because she led with that leg, which sounds like that's a lot of what Chase does. And that that's a habit that you will have to break because you'll end up with hip issues eventually. You'll end up with pelvic issues. Um, try to block that leg. Whenever he goes to stand up, make sure you block that leg. Make him stand up with the other one. That's Tabitha, she gets in the car. We did it primarily with the left leg to get her in, and now we're trying to do it with the other leg to make sure that she's balanced. It seems like his motor memory is awesome. Our so kids have awesome motor memory. Amazing. Just do it over and over and over and over again. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Braces. Braces. Say it again in the mic. So we had we had we had the AFOs. And Okay. And then we moved to the SMOs, um, but do you think him just having an insert, like the poly walks, mm -hmm. yeah, with just the raised arch there to keep him from pronating in? I'm do it to yourself at home. Go get yourself an arch support at the drugstore at Walgreens, tape a couple of them together and stick them in his shoe. That's really the best that's way to do it. Only, that's the only thing that he has, and I hate to put them in the SMOs, it's just they're uncomfortable, and of his foot is like this wide anyway, right. so it all just goes. can't get a, a shoe to work. Um, for Try it. that at home. Like, go to Walgreens or whatever. And, I mean, you can, like the little ball of foot pads that you, women can put in the ball of their shoes, you know, with yeah. the high heels. Take those, cut them up, stick them in the arch of his foot, and see if it makes a difference. And then if it does approach your feet, you you're like, hey, give me these. Because it's not bad. Even when he wears tennis shoes, it's not as bad. Like, you know, when he walks around barefoot, you can really see him from mm -hmm. um, But that's really the only, the only problem. But... PT always was like, you know, they want them in the SMOs and they want, you know, but they're just so uncomfortable. They are. I agree. We do. We have our supports and job issues because I don't want her in our SMOs anymore. Yeah. Do you have a website that you like to order um, things from, like, um, like weights for their arms or anything like that? No, because I usually make tabitha's. <laughs> okay, I've been making things too. Like yeah. Um, I can email you guys a list. I get a couple of adaptive magazines that have pediatric equipment in it, but um, by and large, there's not one that I use regularly. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Any other questions? The stick, I forgot to ask you about the stick. Have you used, I use the stick on myself after a run. Is it uh, good to use the stick on these kids to kind of loosen them up? No. It's not? I would say no. They're already loose. Don't even make them any looser. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the stick is designed primarily for pain, so I don't see the correlation between using the stick on a kid to, I mean, if you want to massage them, you can, but like I said, it's primarily for pain, and if you know that they're in pain, try it. Yeah, go ahead.
before you were mentioning exercises on the ball uh, to work on their core, can you just describe a couple of them? Absolutely. Um, there's two things that you can do that we did with Tabitha when she was younger. Number one, do you know the difference between the BOSU ball and the big therapy ball? No. Okay. BOSU ball is half of a ball. It's flat on the bottom and it's a dome on the top and it's made out of the same material, but it's about this tall from here to here. Okay, because um, your little one is younger, you may want to try with that instead. Um, sit them on the ball and then push, push on the ball so that it changes where they sit so that she has to use core. You can do the same thing with the therapy ball if you want to, put them on the ball, but that requires more hands. With the BOSU ball, because it's flat on the bottom, they're safe that you just manipulate the ball, whereas if they're on the therapy ball, you have to manipulate the ball and them. Um, with Tabitha, we would roll her over the ball, push her over it, hold on to her legs, and we make her arch her back, so she, we would get strengthening on the back, and then we would do the same thing. Of course, Tabitha's very food motivated because she's my child and she really likes food. So we'd put her over it facing up, and then I would have her food or her bottle or whatever in front of her, and I would roll her towards me, and then we'd work on her upper core, and she would sit up and reach. So she would be laying on it like this, and as I rolled her, she would sit up over it and then reach for it. You can do anything like that on a ball, have them sit on a ball, have them reach on a ball. If you're feeding her on a ball and she likes to reach and she can finger feed, make her reach away from it because that engages core muscles all the way around. Yeah, and some of the therapy balls do have stand if you're interested in those. Find that you get a lot of shortening with uh, growth spurts, muscle shortening, or we, uh, um, my child's 11, with our last growth spurt, inversion, um, minor flexion, walking on toes, just don't want more on one side than the other. Puberty? Um, maybe. Like on early onset, just starting kind of thing. That it was, it's more explained by that than actual penis. Huh. So just we're bracing right now in between. But. Bracing and stretching, keep your you know. Okay. Any? Any uh, PT exercises for helping you go to the bathroom? What? You try to look like an expert potty training. Is my child potty training? No. Like, okay, so I can make it a PT question. I'd be like, like sitting on the toilet, like getting on the toilet, or actually doing the business on the toilet. <laughs> no, constipation. Constipation, prune juice, marilyns. <laughs> uh, what's happened that we use a tennis ball. We did a testicle massage with a tennis ball. We moved it around in the same pattern that it moves in the body on its own. Because I've noticed after some sessions, like, it works. He's, I don't know what she did that day. <laughs> um, more core activity will induce that. Otherwise, put them on the toilet every 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, just in reference to what she said with the potty training, uh -huh. my daughter's seven. She still has issues of making the connection. I guess we're thinking it's like a brain connection there to know, you know, to hold it. Mm -hmm. So with exercises, maybe she would feel like she's full and. You know what I'm saying? Uh, tricky, tricky. Um, essentially, you're asking me if, you're, if your child can do Kegels. Um, oh, jeez. I mean, that's, that's, well, the, I that's I, the essentials I of I ladder. It's a brain connection, or well, maybe she doesn't have that feeling of fullness, you know what I mean, to hold, be able to hold it, the muscles. That's more of a question for your neurologist, um, because you can strengthen all the muscles in the stomach, but the trigger has to come from up here. So I heard you say our kids tend to have great motor memory, yes. but my daughter has horrible motor planning, so it seems, is, is the main thing, for example, she loves the water, so one of my sort of life goals for her is that she learns how to swim, because I know she just loves it, is the main thing to just get them in the water and physically move their legs in the kicking motion of yes, the motor time. memory creates the motor planning. Okay, and then she'll learn how to do it just like we did with like climbing the stairs. Yes. Just Hand over hand it will be a little bit more difficult because you have that whole life and death situation thing. Yeah, I know. It's a little different that way. But, I know. but you, it's, it's definitely doable. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I actually have a question about the swim 
Young, um, Annie is 15 and weighs like 140 pounds and she's not able to walk. Um, loves the water. And up until this year when she gained 25 pounds in the last year, um, I was able to hold her in the water with just me and her. I've tried every type of flotation thing on her. I've spent, I can't tell you how many, how much money on different things that I get. It doesn't work, but because it got wet, you can't return it. Sure. Um, is there any recommendations? I mean, I've tried just the basic noodles, you know, where she's... You need to use noodles and rope. What do you do with rope? <laughs> <laughs> This is, um, with Tabitha, we use the noodles, we take a piece of rope and we thread it through the, the noodle. Okay. And then we cut the noodle so that the noodle fits all the way around here and matches right here and then we tie it. So we have essentially created a harness inside the water and then my husband is a little slightly paranoid. So we put another noodle around that to give her more of a platform to rest her arms on. So hmm. how many noodles does she have around her? Just one? Or two? two? Does she straddle one and then one around no, her waist? She lays in it like a noodle. I hope to get a picture, if you have a picture of it, that would be great. I have a visual camera. <laughs> it's like I'm sitting in a donut. I'm trying to find a picture of a contraption that my husband made. I can find it, I'll share it. But we did the same sort of thing that he, because um, my child, is, this is my child, I'm here for my grandchild who has PMS. Um, but my child has her syndrome. Um, he has a trach, so we have to keep him upright. Uh -huh. um, so he made a contraption, for lack of a better word, a PVC pipe and crap trap floats. <laughs> and uh, it has a seat in it, and it's perfect. It floats him, he sits up, keeps him, you know, at least up, rest up, and he can't get, you know, can't get down, but he can paddle him where he wants to go. You know, so if I can find it, I'll find it on the phone. I don't mind showing it to you, but it's really, you know, you just got to work. But I'm going to try that thing because that might free it up a little bit. I also but have a pair of use a, a laundry basket, a large rectangular laundry basket. And this is the laundry basket. Top would be right here. She wrapped the perimeter all the way around and sliced off the end so it. He could come out the end and then took PVC pipe and put PVC pipe all the way around the top edge so that essentially the child was sitting inside the laundry basket in the wall. That's, that was my problem. I needed to feel like there was something underneath him that he couldn't. Yep, and then because you can, the, the laundry basket obviously has holes, you could strap the swimming noodle through the loops yeah, or tether something into a car. Yeah, yeah, so I'll try to find it, but it, you can do it. Yep, it's doable. Anybody else? Tips for us as caregivers to prevent ourselves from getting hurt. Oh yes. We do a lot of bending over and supporting their weight. And I'm going to give you the down and dirty real quick. You have to do this. You're lifting up your kid. You have to be right here. It's not. It's not a. Hey, let me pick you up and I'm going to move you over here. The closer they are to your body, the safer you are. Um, the less you twist by using your back, the safer you are, the more you use your legs. If you can pretend like this doesn't move without this, if you can turn this way instead of turning this way, your chances of injuring yourself go down dramatically. What's a good way to lift them out of the toilet? Or out of the tub? Yeah, out of the toilet. Um, out of the toilet. Not, not out of the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they're not in the toilet. Out of the bathroom. <laughs> <That's laughs> <Malcolm, sorry. laughs> Where has this session gone? <laughs> it's the toilet. In the toilet. <laughs> My brother used to stand in the toilet and flush it and say he was an astronaut. So. <laughs> but, um, getting them out of the bathtub. Uh, what we did with Tabitha was I went to Walmart, got a cheap yoga mat, put the yoga mat in the bottom of the bathtub, put a yoga mat on the outside of the bathtub. And I would get in the bathtub and literally lift her up and put her onto the ledge, sit her on the ledge, swing her legs around, and then I would put her leg on mine and we would stand up together. And then, um, yeah. it's hard to smaller. But getting out of the bathtub, which now we have it to where he will initiate with you, he'll grab onto your hand and stand up himself. But um, for the smaller kids that are heavy, if you sit, if your, if your toilet is close to the, to the tub, I would sit and then have him turn around and then I lift my my arm my hands up underneath his armpits and then literally you're not having to bend over at all, but you just 
lift them right into your lap. So yep. you have the towel here, arm, hands under the yep. arm. And you're, you're sitting, so your chances of torquing your back yeah. are a lot less. So that works well for the smaller kids. I know if your kid's 15 or 20, it's probably not going to work out well. But um, for a smaller child, that's what we used to do. Getting up off the floor is different because that requires motor planning. It might be that they don't know how. Tabitha did not know how. So we had to use motor memory to create the motor planning so she could do it, which was a lot of over and over again. Okay, I'm going to crawl. She could get over to the chair. And then after here, it was like, oh, help. I'm lost. I'm stuck here. So we would move. This leg would go. I would push down into this hand. This leg would go. And then we would help her stand up. And then I would throw her back down on the floor. And we would get over and over and over. Lift this leg up, I help her shift her weight, she'd lift and push up, and over and over and over. And now, that's all she wants to do. <coughs> Anybody else? Yep. Okay. Are you aware of any backpack carriers for kids over 40 pounds? Absolutely. If you want to go hiking? Nope. nope. Because it's too much of a liability for the company. For you to wear 40 pounds on your back. Gotcha. You, there are plenty of strollers. Like we have the big Waikiki stroller that holds up to 150 pounds that we jog with Tabitha with. It's got three wheels on it that we can go, you know, off road and on the road and in a store. Three different front wheel attachments. But as for backpacking, no. Okay, thanks. We probably have to sign a waiver. <laughs> So my daughter's 11, when she gets out of the car seat, she melts. So she just totally melts to the yeah. floor. Any advice? That's a learned behavior. Maybe I'm okay. No, it's um, okay. It's, um, that's, with Tabitha, that's an avoidance behavior. That's I don't want to get out of the car behavior. And so I'm going to melt so that she cannot get me out of the car. <laughs> and now that she's big enough, she's realized that, hey, they really can get me out of the car, so I win. Um, with Tabitha, whenever she melts, it's all about distraction. I walk away. I don't give her that attention because with Tabitha, it doesn't matter if it's negative attention or positive attention. If I'm telling her no in her face, it's the same thing as me telling her, yeah, I love you in her face. She wants this right here. And so I have had to learn to just walk away. And you may have, you may have to do the same thing. Because even if you tell her, yay, you know, we need to get out of the car. Hey, come on, help me get out of the car. You're still right here. And she's getting the attention that she wants, that she desires because she doesn't want to get out of the car. So I'm going to lure her outside the car with my iPad or something. Just be like, hey, here's some snacks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sometimes I'll tickle her belly to get her core to kind of... Yeah, what time of that behavior is completely, that's a manipulative thing. These kids, man, they're too smart for us. They really are. And my parents are like, she can't be manipulative. Like, yeah, she can. When she headbutts me, yeah, she can be manipulative. I was just curious if there are any other children who, like, my daughter's really hunched in her shoulders, just, like, really tight. I would say, and so we try to kind of like massage her shoulders just to like get her to relax. It's like she just always wants to be kind of in this position. So I was wondering if, I guess, you've seen that at all with any other PMS kids and that? I have trips. seen that in other kids that seek sensory. They seek that I'm more comfortable when I'm all compressed, and so they create that on their own by lifting up their shoulders because if she, does she tuck her head also when that happens? She do not, all of this? Not really. Like some of her therapists think it's because her core is weak almost, mm -hmm. and so she's trying to compensate. Like when she eats, yeah, she doesn't have the control here, so she has to control it in her shoulders. Right. Almost. Right. Mm -hmm. That it, it can be. It can. The most common is core weakness, or it's they they don't feel centered, they don't feel secure, so they try to create that compression by themselves by either coming inward or drawing their knees up or bringing their shoulders up toward their face, create that nest. Hmm? It could be pain, sure. I got one. If you only had one piece of equipment to use for physical therapy, what would you have? That's a trick question. <laughs> you know I don't have just one. Um, I would have a motivated parent because you can do, you can use anything at your house as a piece of equipment instead of having to buy something. You can use rolled up blankets, you can use rice bags, you can take a piece of board and make it a seesaw on your floor and create your own therapy session as long as you have a motivated parent. You can use whatever you want. 
Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, I have a question for you. Um, and Annie's big, and she in the last. You keep um, saying that wrong because Annie. She's big. really big. She's big. <laughs> big. Um, anyway, uh, she was doing pretty well up until about age. She's 15 now. Up to about age between ages seven and 10, school um, PT was really working on her taking steps with assistance, and she was up to about 10 to 15 good steps with minimal assistance. Um, she could stand with very little assistance, um, you know, especially if she was up against a sink, she, her arms would be up, you know, and she could support herself if somebody was always standing with her. Um, and then uh, as she started to grow and gain a lot of weight, and then she got the hip subluxation problem, and then she had about, she has about a three inch length difference. We decided not to do the surgery. They did um, an injection for the pain, which helped. I wanted to get through puberty and the growth, the growth spurt. Um, so now she's not in pain. She's got about a three inch leg length difference, mm -hmm. but she's completely regressed on taking steps. Um, she'll stand with assistance and she'll help transfer out of the wheelchair um, to the, you know, um, meet her to the floor, um, put her in the stander. I'm just wondering, do I, at school, they've pretty much given up on walking. Their, their goal now is to have her operate her power chair and to understand that. I mean, they do standing, um, but, and they do, more transition out of the wheelchair, you know, getting her to help with that, but taking steps is not a goal any longer. So um, should I, I mean, I'm almost wondering as she got to a point where it's too old to teach her to you know, take steps. Um, and then I, the other thing I was wondering is, do you, you know, we have a treadmill at home, I know I've seen the devices that go over it, but is, is that something that is not, I mean, that's, I don't even know where to begin other than going back to PT again and starting from scratch with bringing this child into a whole new PT, you know, PT. We do the horse therapy, which is great, mm -hmm. you know, for her torso, but I'm so frustrated because she was doing great in the last three your years. Issue is very, your issue is very multifaceted. That's, it's very complex because you've got the weight gain, you've got the leg length, you've got, you know, the subluxation and all that stuff. And she's got like the demon to top it off, like really bad. Right. In the left leg, I was right. running, yeah. <laughs> um, Safety, joint safety would be my biggest issue with her because of her weight to make sure that when she does stand or when she does try to take steps that she's in the best of the possible so that she don't create any more stress or any damage to those joints. Their, you know, standing frame, um, posterior walkers, prone mobile standards where she's laying kind of on a platform and she's trying to push a wheelchair wheels while she's Excuse me, while she's upright, those are those all might be options, but I know you guys already have a whole lot of equipment, and I know if the goal is for her to take steps that are functional to get her, you know, at least from a short point A to point B, you know, you don't really want to worry about a whole lot of equipment and substituting for gait. Ooh, um, I think that you would have to go back to PT. I think that you will have to go back to PT and kind of start over from scratch because you you. You guys are complicated and you have, you have the lymphedema and you can't wear the braces because of the lymphedema. Or you can wear braces but you have to be on such a limited wear schedule because she's going to puff up everywhere that the braces aren't. So it's going to be a lot of trial and error in her case to figure out what's going to work and what she's going to be able to tolerate because she has so much other stuff going on. Okay. Ten minutes, anybody else? So, um, my BT asked about, um, she's great, she's got 30 years in business and stuff, but she's, they'll, they'll be talking about <laughs> Eventually she wants to try to get him on a bike, you know, on a dad's bike. Okay. And, you know, he's been walking now for six, seven months and he's doing pretty well. What would be the appropriate steps to take next to do that? To get him on an active bike? Mm -hmm. Put him in seat. I mean, if they make them small enough for him, absolutely, because adaptive bikes are made so that you strap the feet in, you strap the trunk in. I mean, obviously, he's got enough trunk control because he's walking. The bigger issue is going to be, is he going to understand what he needs to do to get the bike to move? Button up motor, Yeah. You can do that, but 
It's, it's really hard work in an adaptive bike because they have to make them heavier so that they don't flip. They have to have a wider base of support so that they don't flip. It may, it may create more frustration for him than actual benefit. So that's where you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons of that. That's another reason why we've never put time within a bike. Yeah. Because she, she will be so incredibly content for us to push her in the bike and have the pedals move, but she's not doing any of the effort. But she likes the sensation of her legs moving and the wind in her face and not walking. But to actually propel it independently on her own, uh, I'm okay if she doesn't do that. It seems like the more we, we give them to assist them like a walker and a trainer, it's the thing we want. Or not mm -hmm. I agree with you. She was better off when we just come to her in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right next to her on the table. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a place, you know, a, a good adaptive bike is great for learning coordination, but like I said before, they have to understand what they have to do to make it move. You know, maybe when he's a little bit older, absolutely try it. For now, if you just want to work on it for core strengthening and for that kind of reciprocal motion to help make his walking better, that may be really beneficial. You know, because walking and biking are the same, you know, one leg is bent while the other leg is straight. It mimics the same thing, and they, like I said, it may, it may help that. What are some of the issues as the kids get older that they face? Like I can already tell like my daughter's hips seem just like really flexible and I feel like I've heard people maybe touch on hip issues. Is there anything we can be doing, you know, now as she ages um, to help prevent some of that? The stronger your child is, the less damage they do to themselves. Same for regular people. Um, being educated about positioning. Uh, if your kid is a W sitter, if they like to sit like this, kick those legs around. If your kid has a kickstand, if she sits with one leg out and the other leg kicked back to help keep her stable, kick that leg around. And a lot of it has to do with postures when they sit. Tabitha likes to sit side sit like this, which if she does it for a long period of time, is going to create a scoliosis because this hip is going to be higher. So the more you promote symmetry in the stuff that your child does, the better chance they have of not having muscular issues as they grow or imbalances. And then my PT also wanted to ask, do any of these kids have spine issues at all? Sure. Yeah, they do. I mean, I've seen scoliosis, I've seen kyphosis, I've seen rods, I mean, Sammy. Sammy's got tons of jumping in his back. All kinds of screws, and you know, it's and it's not that you know all kids are going to get it. I think it has to do with their position, um, positions at school, their positions at home. If you sit them in a chair, obviously, like this, it's going to promote that spinal curvature forward, and they're going to have to have the hairy balance to bring it back up. Like Tabitha, if she's going to sit like this all the time, I mean, she's going to definitely get a scoliosis. A lot of spinal issues, unless their core is completely weak and unable to be strengthened, that's when rods and that kind of surgery has to in place, usually. At least that's what I've seen. Five minutes, who's next? Anybody? Anybody? If you guys ever need any letters of medical necessity, you can find me on Facebook. I mean, obviously I can't recommend the Rift and Gay Trainer model, blah, 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 but if, because I'm not your child's PT, but if you need an advocate for your child for to try to get a piece of equipment, get in contact with me. I'll get in contact with your child's PT and we'll just talk about it. Chase loves to do what his brother and his sister does, uh -huh. like, no matter what it is. So we have a trampoline on top and we've been putting him on the trampoline and standing him up holding his hips and Great. bouncing. Any recommendations on things to do on the trampoline for him? Just balance is really what we're working on. That's like the best therapy ball ever. I'm so jealous I want to complain. One of the best things that you can do is set him right in the middle of it, have them walk around him. <laughs> have him go walk to one side, jump off the other side, obviously gently, but I don't want to feel Well, the kids take turns like holding him and bouncing, you know, they, so they get into it too. Mm -hmm. The other thing is... Um, you can put him on his hands and knees there and have them do the same thing, have them walk around him. That way he has to shift his weight as they go. That'll help strengthen his core and his arms and his legs too. As you looking at Rick, like, hey, let's do that. Wow. Well, so yeah, we can give him a new trampoline. You can put him in any position on the trampoline and modify the trampoline. Have the kids walk around him in a circle. Have the kids, you know, take turns sitting and standing and sitting and standing because that creates that pressure difference. Stretches out the springs bigger on one side, so he has to lean. It's swinging. We had him in a, a toddler swing. Perfect. Now he's 
sitting in a swing with me holding his hands, mm -hmm. and he's imitating the swing motion. Like that. Good. We did that to, to learn to get time to learn how to do that. I didn't have to do school. I felt like I was holding a carrot in front of a horse. Come get it. She's like, she'd come forward and then she'd lean back. But use whatever works, really. Cool. My kid's really not a dog. She's super cute, though. She does work for food, though. All right, anybody else? All done. Okay, we have a couple of housekeeping things. If you can uh, fill out the questionnaire and hand it to me on the way out, I'd appreciate it. And then don't forget, we have our Sweet 16 dance party tonight. It's dinner. Um, the bar will be Cash Bar and dancing in the in and two minute drawing. So hopefully everybody can come to that. We'll be done. Um, on Facebook, I am Tiffany and Jake Engel. Um, my settings are very private because my husband's slightly paranoid about Tabitha getting abducted by strangers, which is okay. I'm okay with that. Um, but find me on the family page in front of me and then you